already, guys. So we're at the McGarry Visitor Center. So this is the gold coin, the famous gold coin, roadside attraction. This is to commemorate all the gold that they pulled out of Virginia Town, out of the Kerr Addison mine here. 1908. Kermine Road here, stop sign. That's the town of Virginia Town. So that was there to house the workers. And then the tailings got dumped in Larder Lake there. So Larder Lake was kind of the, the dumping ground for everything. This is the museum, guys. It's a tourist information center slash uh, museum. And it's for, it's the McGarry uh, Township Visitor Center because this whole area is the McGarry Township. So this is the place. Anything on the boards here? 1980 Gold Sovereign, Canada's first gold coin, minted with gold from the mines located at the site of the Kerr Addison Mine in Virginia Town. This two and a half ton replica was created by the students of the 1988-89 Welder Fitter Program at the campus of Northern College in Kirkland Lake, Ontario. Oh nice, welders, yeah, yeah. My brothers. This is a great little truck, guys. Five liter V8. Loving this guy. Drives really nice. XLT4, pretty bare bones, but it's still pretty nice. Get some good tires on it too, it's all that matters. Alrighty guys, in the block fly we're here. As usual in the bush. Here we go, Larder Lake. This was the tailings dump for the Kerr Addison mine. There's a boat here too, actually. It's cool. Kind of cool. Little metal boat. It's a nice looking boat. Liking it. Oh, she's got a screw in her. Nice. Ah, oh, yeah. That's what I'm talking about. The rudder's seen better days, though. Wonder what it was doing on Larder Lake. Cool. It looks like there's a ruin here, too. Some sort. Definitely want to be careful walking around here, guys. There's a lot of mine shafts in the area. And especially, like, when you get up near Cobalt. You don't just want to go traipsing off into the bush because you could fall down a mine shaft. So just be really cognizant when you're walking in the Northern Ontario bush, especially in these heavy mineralized areas. They sunk a lot of shafts and they don't exactly like, you know, let you know that there's shafts there or they know, and they don't put coverings on them. And if they did, they wouldn't hold for that long. So just be really careful guys, because you don't want to fall down a 300 foot shaft in the, you know, abyss of the Canadian shield, which it has happened. And, it does happen. So that's Larder Lake. Larder Lake for Pete's sake, old Stomp and Tom song. You can see that little butte too, out in the back there. I love that butte, it's pretty iconic looking. That's closer towards Virginia Town. We're gonna go look at the side of the highway too, look at some rocks. Alrighty guys, so tailings pile here. From uh, Virginia Town. They're all the way, there's all kinds of them. We, you follow this trail all the way along here and it takes you to like a tailings pile there. Like even just that, like look at that. The black flies though, whoo, and the horse flies. Everywhere, but it's worth it. Like look at this piece, pyrite. Look at it, it's glow, it's literally glowing. Look at that. Yeah, yeah don't underestimate tailings piles guys. Tailings piles can be quite fruitful. We're just at the waterfront here in Virginia Town. Nice lake, man. Really nice lake. Very hilly, almost quite mountainous in ways, in parts. Kerr Addison Mine in the Abitibi Gold Belt here. There's a solar panel uh, power generation thing here for the town, which is really cool. The 
weather's just gorgeous too. Like, it doesn't get much better than this, guys. Alrighty guys, so we're at the Kirkland Lake Miners Memorial, honoring all the all the guys that died in the mines there. It's a nice art installation and it's to commemorate all the guys that died in the mines, right, or were injured or weren't as lucky as some other guys. Drifting, cleaning the stopes, stoping, and then buddy putting the ladder up there on the stopes. National Day of Mourning, dedicated with deepest respect to the workers whose lives have been disabled or ended by injury or disease in the workplace in their struggle to support the families and maintain their culture. Yeah, guys, even just getting injured back in the day or even now, it's a big deal, guys. It's work safety, workers' comp, all these things. They didn't have any of this back in the day. We're very lucky now. We have labor law and stuff. Back, People were exploited quite badly, uh, especially European, Eastern European immigrants and stuff. A lot of them, Ukrainians, Polish, German, lots and lots of different cultures here. And they were, they weren't treated very well at work. And they were given really dangerous jobs, jobs that the Canadians, the British, the Americans, they didn't want to do. The Miner's Memorial, the Lakeshore Mine. A lot of guys, man. Omega Mine. The Martin Bird Mine. Brock Mine. Battle Mountain Mine. Mikasa Mine, Kerr Addison Mine, that was in Virginia Town, Wright Hargraves Mine, the Adams Mine, Chesterville Mine, Baldwin Mine, Oriole Mine, Barry Hollinger Mine, Bid Good Mine, Morris Kirkland Mine. Sad guys. It's really sad that it happens, but it's it's a reality in the in the workplace, especially in a dangerous job such as the trades. Dedicated to all the guys who were disabled, injured, killed, on the job. And you know, it's like you just go to work one day, and then you fall, some, a rock falls on you, you fall, machinery drives over you, something happens, right? And you either become disabled or you die. And that's kind of the reality of it, guys. Labor conditions, safe, safe work site for everybody, right? Um, Everybody has the right to go home safe, guys. Nobody wants to get hurt. As you can see, lots of people got hurt back in the day. So we're going to continue on with the Trillburn gold mine now. We're going to go to uh, check that out. Um, look into the history of gold mining in Kirkland Lake because there's a lot of it. Shaft number three, guys. That's the head frame. It looks familiar, eh? The Aldor, very similar. Well, it's, they're just head frames. That's that's what a head frame looks like. The hoist room is right here. This is the hoist room and power of the winch there. It's the Toburn mine. Cross section looking east. Nice. They got the ore body here. Veins, faults. I'm liking it. Sweet. Shaft, right? Here we go. Underground hoist, winds. And so you can see there how they're chasing that ore body. The veins are the red. The faults are blue. Sedimentary is gray. Ore mined is black. Long way down though, man. Kirkland Lake Fault, South Vein. And they're following the Cadillac Vein. The Cadillac Vein goes all the way from Valdor to Kirkland Lake. 42,583,205 ounces of gold was produced up to 2012 in the Kirkland Lake region. It would represent $60.3 billion in today's market. The cage is used to convey men and equipment up and down the shaft. It is also used to haul ore to the surface for the processing in the mill. Note the tracks in the floor which allowed carts to be rolled in and out of the cage. So 
this would have been the hoist room. Compressor room. Sinking bucket. The sinking bucket was initially used to mine the vertical openings or shafts. The buckets were used to hoist the water from the shaft bottom. All the materials required in the shaft were transported in the bucket and also the men going up and down. Diamond drill bit. Uh, yeah, drilling in the drilling in the rock. These tricone teeth here, tricone drill bits. Kirkland Lake region. These are all the mines, the mine and the year and the production of gold. Kerr, Addison, Lakeshore, Wright Hargraves, Tech Hughes, Mikasa, Sylvany, Upper Canada, Holt, Kirkland Lake, Ross, Holloway, Young, Davidson, Toburn, Kirkland Lake Gold, Black Fox, total number of ounces, 42,583,205 ounces. First mineral discovery, silver lead, Argent Plum, March 24th, 1686, found on the shore of Lake Temiskaming. First mine, E.V. Wright Mine, 1870. Metals and minerals found in the region to 2012. Antimony, arsenic, asbestos, barite, bismuth, chromium, cobalt, copper, diamonds, gold, iron, lead, limestone, lithium, molybdenum, palladium, platinum, silver, tellurium, titanium, tungsten, and zinc. For many countries, they came to the land of the Algonquin Cree Ojibwe, the individuals who built this region. Dane, Cobalt, Rammore, Swastika, Elk Lake, Larder Lake, Virginia Town, Gauganda, Matheson, Kirkland Lake, Dobie, Boston Creek, Mattachewan, and Holter. There's a mural or a, like a carving, mining carving. World record, Makasa number three shaft, deepest single lift timbered mine shaft in the world. First bench blasted May 1st, 1983, 11 a.m. Last bench blasted April 17th. 1986, 7, 10 p.m. Depth, 7,238.12 feet, 2,206 meters. This is the Mikasa shaft, and that's the Wright Hargraves shaft. Number, Mikasa number three, Mikasa number three, Wright Hargraves number four, that's the CN Tower up there. 500 feet, 1,000 feet, 1,500 feet, 2,000 feet, 2,500, 3,000, 3,500, 4,000. You can see here, they're transferring down over. Goes all the way down to 8,222 feet, guys. Some deep mine shafts here. Battery tramming motor. These small motors enable trains and cars to be hauled to the dump points together instead of being pulled or pushed one at a time by a miner. Yeah, that would be brutal. The batteries were lead acid and required charging every day at underground charging stations. So here's the ore cart. Mucking machine. This type of loader replaced the miner's shovel and greatly increased production underground. Use of these machines meant that larger mine cars could be used and which in turn meant bigger tunnels and more ore could be moved. Mucking machines are still used underground in mines even in these days of diesel loaders and trucks. And some of them are up to three times the size of the machine here. They are powered by compressed air. Claim stake, oh, here's the claim stake. We got birch tree too, Ontario birch tree. Good old Ontario birch bark, eh? Look at this rock with quartz in it. Look, look, so cool, man. It's so cool, there's so much mineralization here. This is, this, this is similar to the stuff I was getting the side of the highway, look. Right there, piece of pyrite. Quartz, quartz veins. But yeah, the intrusions, guys, these are the intrusions, right, in the rock. So this was filled in by hydrothermal fluid. Steam-powered winch. This winch could be powered by steam or compressed air. It was small enough to be hauled into place by a team of horses. Fire hose wagon. Accidental fires were frequent in the pioneer days. One of the first structures built at the mine site would be the water tower, usually built on an elevated site. It would provide enough pressure to supply hoses connected to its base. There was once a large water tower at the high point on Tower Street in Kirkland Lake. Diamond drilling, my favorite. Oh, nice, oh sweet. <laughs> the old foundation here, old concrete, little cart with a Jenny on it. Boyles Brothers, BBU-1, underground diamond drill, powered by compressed air, easily disassembled for transport to confined underground locations, capacity of 300 meters using A-series rods, often drilled multiple holes from one location, fan drilling, capable of drilling up or down, used for exploration 
and infill drilling to precisely define bodies in preparation for mining. These are heavy, man. Heavy. Boyle Brothers. Ooh, you can see the gear train. Nice. Bevel gears. Boyle Brothers BBS Junior Surface Diamond Drill. Powered by water-cooled three-cylinder Perkins diesel. Easily disassembled for air transportation remote exploration sites. Rated for 500 meters using a size rods. Replaced earlier, cumbersome steam-powered drill equipment. One of the first and most widely used drills in mining exploration. The schematic of it. And then this is the drill. Diamond drill. Surface diamond drill. And then the drill steel here. Okay guys, so that's gonna be it for uh, Kirkland Lake, the Toburn gold mine tour. Really, really cool. Really fascinating to see the, the history and the legacy of Kirkland Lake and how uh, how many gold mines there were here and how much, because like, I've heard about it before and you always hear about Kirkland Lake and everything like that and how much activity went on here and all the gold and stuff, but it really, there's tons, man, tons. So that's gonna be it for me, guys. Sasquatch is, uh, we're closing this one out. See the head frame in the back there. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, it's really cool. If you're ever up Northern Ontario, Quebec kind of area, make sure you check it out. Definitely worth it. It's a self-guided tour. They have video references and stuff that you can use. That's gonna be it for me. Like and subscribe to the channel. Make sure you follow me for uh, more videos coming out in Northern Ontario, Quebec, and Sasquatch Prospecting. Oh.